Today, family live webinar on the principle of train and teach part one. So hello to all of you parents and children here on Zoom. We're also streaming live at the CCF Next Gen FB page. So hi to all of you who are on Facebook. So there are actually three webinars happening tonight for the different life stages. You are now here on the webinar for parents with young kids. If your children are ages zero up to seven years old and you're in the right place. There is also a webinar for parents with teenagers and they're streaming also tonight at the Elevate main FB page. Lastly, we have the webinar for the grandparents and the parents with adult children streaming at the CCF main FB page. So we recommend that you attend the webinar that is appropriate to your child's life stage to make the most of your learning tonight. Before I turn you over to our moderators, let's have a quick icebreaker to start off our time together. Okay, so this is sort of a review. We call this activity two truths and one lie. So basically, we'll show three statements from the message last Sunday on the principle of training, and you need to spot the statement that is incorrect. Okay, so you can send your answer through chat, so that way you'll be able to interact with us. And we'll try to give a shout out to the person who's first to submit the correct answer. We can't promise that, but we'll try, okay? So are you all ready? Okay, let's start. Which statement is incorrect? Obey immediately, obey joyfully, and obey externally. Okay, so we have a lot of answers coming in now. So, okay, let's see. Three, two, one. Okay, what's the answer? Let's see. What's the incorrect statement? Okay, we have a lot of answers coming in. Some said two, others three. Okay, which one is correct? I mean, which one is the correct answer? <laughs> okay, yes, so the incorrect statement is obey externally. Okay, so we are to obey completely with a good attitude from the heart and with a smile. So this is incorrect. Okay, let's go to the next batch of statements. Okay, so next. No trains them to instant gratification. Wait trains them to be patient. Obey trains them to follow immediately. Which one is incorrect? Okay, we're getting answers. Okay, a lot of you are really quick. Okay, so the incorrect statement is, let's show it. The incorrect statement is, Number one, you're correct, guys, you're doing well. So no trains them to have instant gratification is wrong. So we say no. Okay, the correct one is we say no when they want to do something they should not do or have something they should not have. Okay, so we're down to the last batch of statements. You guys are uh, doing pretty well. Okay, so first statement, Proverbs 13, 24 talks about disciplining with rod. Proverbs 22.6 talks about training up a child. Proverbs 22.15 talks about the innate goodness in us. Let's see. Okay, some answered two, others three. Winston. Winston answered three. He's the first one to say three. So very good. Okay, so let's show the incorrect, incorrect statement. <laughs> okay, Proverbs 22.15. Okay, this is wrong. Okay, what is the correct um, statement for this. So if we check our Bibles, Proverbs 22, 15 tells us that foolishness is bound up in the heart of a child. Okay, so great job, everyone. I think we're all set. I'll turn you over now to the lovely couple who's our moderator for tonight, Paul and Jenny Tanji. Hey, Paul, Jenny. Hi, Ellen. Thank you so much for um, getting us started. Um, good evening, everyone. I'm with my wonderful wife. Hi. Yes, and we're, we're excited to be your moderators tonight. Joining us are two amazing families that you'll get to know. You'll also get to know some of our kids. Actually, all of our kids, I think, are here. So let's begin with prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this privilege to learn together. 
Father, it, it is challenging to, to train up our children in the way that they should go. But I thank you that you've given us your, your word to guide us, and you've given us some um, examples that we can also follow. So we pray for our time tonight, Holy Spirit. May you be the one to speak in and through us and help us, Lord, to be able to unpack uh, biblical truths that will help us as we parent our children. So we commit to you everything from beginning to end. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Again, good evening, everybody. Welcome for, um, it's so good to, to be with all of you here again on this Motivate series. Um, I want to begin by introducing to you a family. So the uh, Manny and Lisa are amazing couple. Um, they're, Manny's a businessman. He's a broadcaster. Um, he, he's, a, he's a good golfer, or learning to be a good golfer. Um, uh, Lisa and Jenny and I went to the same school. We went to Faith Academy, and God brought them together. And Manny is a, a CCF servant of the Lord. He loves the Lord with all his heart. Um, he is a gifted teacher, and he has a, a program called L-I-V-E. Right, Manny? Yeah, um, L-I-V-E, uh, Live in Victory. On live YouTube. in Victory. And um, so I want to begin with Manny and his family. And he's, he's with his three children. And Manny, I'll let you introduce your kids. And my first question for you to, to answer to everyone is, um, why is it important that um, children the age of your kids learn obedience? Why is it important for them to, to, to learn that? Um, so yeah, that's, that's an awesome uh, question, Paul. Before I start, I would like to introduce my family first. Uh, so this is uh, starting with the... The, 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 youngest. the youngest, this is Yana, and then Isabel, and then Yeshua. Hi. So why is it important for, for parents to teach their kids how to obey? So Yeshua, you want to answer that? Why is it important for us to teach you how to obey? Well, I think it's really important that we get taught how to obey from a young age because it says in the Bible, train up a child in the way he should go. So when he is old, he will not depart from it. So I think it's, a, it's, it's really important that parents teach their children, their young children especially, um, to obey at a young age so that they know already what is the truth and, and how to obey God even when they're older so they won't uh, turn away from it. Hey, thank you. Thank you, bud. Welcome, Daddy. How about yeah, you? I just want to add one of the reasons why it's so important is, well, for us, you know, we, we start teaching our kids about who God is and about how much he loves them and how to obey. Even, you know, from the womb, when I'm pregnant, you know, we read the Bible to them because I believe it's so important to really ground our kids on God and the word of God and who God is and let them know um, who they are. Um, as a child of God. So really from the very youngest age, we were teaching them about God. We're telling them the good news um, about the gospel and that how to obey, you know, because it's so important that, you know, what, what they learn when they're young, you know, what they're exposed to when they're young will really become their appetite as they're older. So if they're really exposed to the things of God and they learn from a young age that um, obedience to God brings blessing, then, you know, my prayer is that, you know, that will carry them through you know, even as they grow older, um, that, that foundation, that strong foundation of obeying God. Yeah, for me, uh, one of the reasons why we need to, aside from what they said already, one of the reasons why we need to teach our young kids to obey, because there will come a time that they will grow older and they will be listening to many people. Many people will be speaking words to them. And they need to understand who their superiors are and who they should be who is the authority figure in their lives. And at a young age like this, you know, we were given an opportunity to, to uh, raise up our kids. So we need to make sure that they listen to our voice. And the only way for them to listen to our voice is for them to obey. So that when they grow old, there will be times where they will be hearing other voices, uh, conflicting uh, suggestions, conflicting advice, and they would know the foundation that was set to them because they have obeyed us. That's awesome. Uh, Manny and Lisa and Yeshua, thank you for sharing. And um, even uh, Isabel and Yana, thank you for joining us. We look forward to hearing more from you. I want to pass the same question to our next couple. I mean, if, if there's anything that you guys want to add, you know, our next couple is, is Jesse and Kat Tan. And um, Jesse is such an outdoors guy. He's a businessman. He's the uh, president and CEO of Conquer. And, and they, they manufacture all kinds of camping gear and really the best stuff in the world. So I, 
I've used their tents personally, and it's great. We're going camping next uh, next weekend um, in, a, in, a, in a safe place, right? So it's, it's a way to get our families out. But um, Jesse and Kat have six children. So Jesse, I'm going to let you introduce your, your family um, because um, there's too many of them. So maybe as you answer that question, yeah, you guys, even you, you, you younger kids and older kids can also an answer, why is it important that you learn how to obey at a young age? So Jesse, the floor is yours, buddy. Okay, um, good evening, everyone. Yeah, um, as if for us, uh, uh, we grew up without ano, yung guidance. Talaga. I mean, there's a guidance, but not biblical, probably. And um, honestly, uh, for us, parang, meron kasi kami two batch of children. The first three children are, uh, they, they, they saw everything, yung, yung before Christ. And then the second batch of our children uh, were into faith. Na. So we can really see what's the difference with, with the guidance and without the guidance, with the discipline and without the discipline. I'm not saying our first children are not like that, but, you know, um, uh, nakita nila yung mga, ano, yung mga, pagkakamali namin, consequences, and also yung mga wound that by God's grace uh, na healed because na open din yung, yung heart for forgiveness. Na open din na we, we need to be honest and ano yung nangyari, and like that. So, it is very important. Kasi, um, it, it's part of, it's part of uh, being a parent para they will be, of course, God will protect them diba, by God's grace at the end of the day. Pero magagawa namin yung part namin also to protect them uh, by obeying the law of the Lord, but God's, God's, God's word. So, kami, we decided that we will just focus on the final authority, motion before emotion. So, we really need to obey. And, uh, and uh, uh, we, we intentionally also attended yung mga conferences. So, so, it is very important for us para they can live, you know, um, yung better life and uh, end of the day, yung goal nun is uh, for Christ-likeness. Yeah, so it's a protection also of Christ-likeness. And, and I want to introduce pala my family, sorry. <laughs> so again, I'm Jesse, and this is Kat, my, my wife. Lovely, lovely, lovely wife. And uh, this is our uh, no, youngest, Kaden. Say hi, Kaden. And this is Kyron. Kyron, he just graduated from uh, kinder. And um, Craig. Hi. On the other video, that's Sophia, our fourth, our only daughter, and then uh, my favorite daughter, and then <laughs> Kion, our fifth, uh, I, our second son, and then see si Kirk, Kirk, Kirk can see you there. Yeah, and Kirk, our eldest. Thanks, Thank Jesse. Um, Kat, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get to you in a bit about a question, but I have a question for the older kids. Kasi, um, alam naman namin, it's uh, very important to be uh, obedient at a young age, right? But for the kids, um, what are the challenges to obeying today? Um, and, and what makes it difficult for you to obey your parents? So I'm asking you guys, uh, the, the older kids, and um, even, even uh, Craig, you can answer also. And um, my kids can answer as well. So who wants to go first? Yeah. Okay, great. When I'm like doing something and what I'm, I think what I'm doing is more important because when they tell me to do something, I'm still like doing something. Delay. When, yeah. Yes, it's hard thank for you. Me to obey because. I what I I think what I'm doing is more important. Yeah. Thank you, Craig. Thank you for that honesty. I think honestly, all of us, that's what makes it difficult for us to obey. We have our own self-will. We want to do what we want to do. So thank you for being able to express that. How about the um, other kids? Sina Keon, Sophia, Kirk, is there is there anything you want to add? Um I also think one of the challenges for obedience today, like what you said, is self-will. Like for me, one reason I find it difficult to obey my parents is because at times what they're asking me to do is really hard. And like sometimes I feel like there's a way 
to do it easier or there's like a better way. And sometimes I don't, I find it difficult to obey because I, um, what they're asking me to do feels a bit trivial or unimportant at the moment. So I let it wait until later. That was so honest. Thank you, Sophia. Um, the reality is, um, there will come a point in your lives, young kids, if you guys are listening, that you will think that you know more than your parents. Um, and I think with the uh, internet today, it's, uh, it starts a lot younger because there's, there's so much information out there. But like Manny and Lisa and, and Jesse were sharing, it's so critical for us to, to learn to obey when we're young because it really sets a foundation for our relationship with God. And I, I'm so proud of you guys that even though it's difficult to obey and you have your own self-will, um, I know God is helping you to learn to obey. How about the others? Keon Kirk, is there anything you wanted to add? You guys are on mute. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to slide over to my kids, um, Jenny and my kids over there, Caleb, Alana, and Ethan. What makes it difficult for you guys to obey, even knowing that it's important to obey? What are the challenges and what makes it hard for you to obey dad and mom? Uh, it makes it hard for me to obey when, yeah, like Sophia said, like self-will when I want to do my own thing. And I, it, it's also hard for me to obey when it's like the task is difficult, hard, or sometimes embarrassing for me to do and I don't like to do it that's when it's difficult for me to obey. Do you have an example that you want to share about that task? Uh, yeah. Uh, so one time uh, we were getting like frozen yogurt. My dad asked me to ask the, the people like make it higher. And then, and then I was so embarrassed to ask. And then when, my dad, when I asked, I felt so embarrassed because the people said no, only exact height. So I felt really embarrassed. Hey, I'm sorry about that, buddy. I remember that. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll get back to that. And uh, maybe you can share what the lessons you learned from that. Even though it was difficult for you to obey, I'm proud of you that you obeyed. Um, and um, maybe you can share what you learned from it. Uh, Ethan Alana, is there anything you wanted to add about obedience and, and why it's difficult to obey? Yeah, same like Caleb, self-will and also not doing what my parents want me to do because I'm getting distracted um, by doing um, the thing that I'm doing right now. Very good. Thanks, Ethan. Um, do you want to add anything, Alana? For me, I also get distracted a lot. Like if my parents ask me to do something, something I don't always do it immediately because I'm either doing something else or I don't want to do it. Um, uh, thank you. And um, I, I saw a chat, so I'm going to say, uh, I'll speak in Taglish. Um, salamat mga anak sa pag-share uh, ng uh, mga answers nyo. Thank you for sharing it, honestly. I think, uh, parents, this gives us hope. You know, all our children, um, even Manny's children and Jesse's children, we all, they all struggle with the same reality. It's, it's not natural. It's not normal to obey. It's something that needs to be trained, and that's the point. The point is we need, as, as parents, or as having influence in, over a young person's life, we really need to train our children how to obey. So back to you, um, I'll start with Kat, you know, and then we'll, get to, we'll go back to Manny and Lisa. But Kat, um, what, what are the challenges that, did, um, that you faced or maybe are facing today in training your children to be obedient? You know, what, what are some of the real challenges that you face in, in, in doing that? Or maybe you face them, or maybe you're facing them right now. Could you share with us and, and how you are over, overcoming those challenges? I think one of the challenges I'm facing is um, for myself, my patience, because I'm mm. really struggling with my patience. Because as we know, um, with, with our little ones, I really need a lot of patience. So for example, they want something, or I want them to obey, or to tell, I'm telling them something to do, and then they will just cry and whine, and then I cannot, I cannot explain to them. So the first thing that I know that I need to do is to make them calm, so I can talk to them and they can understand why I, I, what I'm telling them to do. But most of the time, 
you know, I will just tell them to stop crying because I have a lot of things in my mind that I need to do in our house. So that's one of the challenges for me. And also I think, um, I think one of the foundational heart issues in every person kasi is um, obeying the authority. So um, it's one of the challenge for me to, to let them understand why they need to obey authority. Because for me, it's important for me to, to obey us so that at the end of the day, they will learn to obey the, the, the highest authority, which is God. So that, that's what, that's the biggest challenge for me. And also, um, maybe um, being consistent in what I do, in modeling to them because of being impatient. So I'm being inconsistent in modeling to them sometimes what they need to see in me as a mother. Wow. Kat, Alamo, you shared some very, um, very, um, I'd say, bullseye, bullseye truths that, you know, when we are impatient and when, when we are not modeling, it becomes very hard to actually train our children because when we react, it's very, um, it, it, it really sets a, a, a negative example for them. Thank you for sharing that. Um, Jesse, did you want to add anything before we go to Manny and Lisa? Yeah, so yung challenge, uh, yun nga, uh, I think for me, for me as a father, sometimes I kick in pride, kick in pride, and um, um, kailangan lang talaga bumalik palagi sa word ng Panginoon to pray. Need, yung napaka important yung yung mga sinishare ni Pastor Peter and sinishare sa Bible, like yung pray, yung pause, the sea is asked and then yield. Kasi if I remember that, I'm starting to figure out muna bago or to, to think before I say something. Kaya lang some, sometimes, the struggle is that syempre I grew up from a non-Christian family. So, sometimes nagkikik in yung mga ganong uh, old old cells pero pero kailangan kailangan lang talaga maging um, yung authenticity that, that saying sorry and then you forgive me and then uh, you try to change like that so yun yung yun yung nagiging struggle ko minsan pag nagkikin yung pride na parang uh, hindi eh nasabi ko na I'm a father so hindi ko pwedeng gawin to hindi ako pwedeng um, um, mag tone down kasi they need to obey so yun yung problem ng mga anak namin minsan, when, 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 sabi nila sa amin, when, when, I, sometimes I get mad, and they can't explain themselves anymore. So, mm -hmm. I guess for me, that's my, my struggle for now. And, and the other way, yung, yung business, and also yung, honestly, yung sometimes the cell phone, the mm -hmm. cell phone, especially, yung, yung meron kang kausap, and then business ngayon, phone sa internet, and then you try to look at the, messages important, and then may mong pop up sa ibang bagay, and then madi-distract kami iba na, so lapit sa ng anak mo um, na nadidivide yung attention. So yun yung palagi namin niya-remind ni Kat. Lagi din ako niya-remind ni Kat about, about yung focusing. Kasi when, when, when they are trying to talk to you, I should give them the 100% full, uh, full attention. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you, Jesse. Again, very honest um, answers. Thank you for sharing that. Manny and Lisa, what, what, are, what are some of the challenges that... Um, you guys have experienced or are experiencing and trying to train your children to be obedient? I guess the biggest challenge for me as a father, you know, uh, we are, we, we, we want sometimes as a father, we're very authoritative. Mm. Uh, and we want, we demand obedience from our kids without looking at the relationship. Uh, and so, you know, there's, there's, a, there's an element of trust between obedience. You cannot just ask your kids to obey if you have not really built a relationship with them because it will only work while they're young. The moment they hit uh, the teenage years, the moment they become adults, you know, they, they have a choice to obey or not to obey. And uh, for most parents, you can't do anything about it anymore. So I believe the challenge is to make sure that as I ask them to obey, I will not exasperate them by asking them things that are not reasonable. Or I ask them things that are not, are not based on love. Because many parents, you know, we, we ask our kids to obey us because we are annoyed, we're doing something, or we just, we just don't want to pay attention to them. Uh, I, I think that's unfair. And uh, I, I believe that the Lord holds us accountable as well, not only in training our kids, but making sure that they feel loved by us. 
Fantastic, Manny. I think you're right. I think a lot of times we do convenient based parenting, right? Where we're in, um, it's, it's really God commands us to love our children and do what's best for them. And I, I, I appreciate that answer. Thank you. How about you, Lisa? I think for me, one of the biggest challenges would probably be busyness. Like sometimes you feel like there, you know, as moms, there's so much on your plate, like your to-do list, there's so many things you want to get done. So sometimes I don't take the time to really, you know, explain um, my expectations clearly enough. I'm just like, you know, giving um, an instruction and then if it doesn't get done, maybe I didn't explain it clearly enough, then, you know, you, you, you get upset. So um, I think distraction can really get in the way. So God is trying to be, be teaching me to really focus on one thing at a time because my brain can tend to be, you know, scattered thinking of all the things I need to get done. So God is teaching me um, to focus on one thing at a time. So if I'm talking to my kids, really, you know, focus at, on them, look them in the eye and be really clear with what I'm saying rather than just, you know, throwing an instruction and then running to the next thing without making sure that they really understood what I was saying in the first place. I love that. I love that point about being, being there when you're talking to your kids. A lot of times, like Jesse shared, we get distracted with cell phones or our mind is somewhere else or we're thinking about the next thing, but it's taking that time. It's, it's an amazing um, um, advice for all of us parents. Uh, sweetheart, did you want to add something about the challenge of um, training? Um, but one of the things I think is difficult for me is really being consistent. Mm. I think, you know, there's moments where, you know, you're like, okay, I can discipline, I can train them. And then there's other times that I just let things slide and I can see it in my kids, you know, they, it's like they know when mommy's kind of a little bit more lenient and it becomes more difficult to really um, enforce the kind of rules we have around our house. So for me, definitely being consistent. That's great. Guys, can I just summarize? You talked about patience, cat, irritation, right? These are barriers to training when we're impatient, when we irritate. You talked about not being a good model when you yourself, uh, when we ourselves are not good models, when we're too busy, um, when we do it with the wrong motive, Manny, when we exasperate our children. And, and parents, uh, those of you who are watching, when you, when you yell at your children, when you get angry, that's not the way to train them. That, that breeds rebellion. And what Jenny shared is so critical because I think a lot of people, um, us included, um, we, we fail to be consistent. We're, we're, we're erratic. Sometimes we're, we're, we're disciplining, sometimes we're not. And you need to really do it in love and, and inconsistency. Yeshua, I'm so glad you're back on here because um, you said train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Um, so I wanna ask you, what kind of training has been effective in teaching you to be obedient? Because like, you, like every child here has self-will, all of us, even us parents, what has helped you? What kind of training has helped you to learn to be obedient? Well, I think that uh, one of the, uh, the most important thing that we are, we are taught through discipline is that to uh, obey God really, because we're, we're not trying to just please our parents. We, we have mm. to please God, right? We have to glorify God and obey him. So we have to submit to his will and not our own agenda, which can be really hard because that's, 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 not, the, that's not the simple nature. But we really have to appeal to his will and, and obey him. And as we obey him, we also obey our, our parents. So, so when, when we obey him, God, always, God, uh, God will provide what's best for us. That's great. Uh, Yeshua, you brought up a very important, important part of training. You know, when you train your children, parents, at a young age, um, you, they may learn to obey because there is a healthy fear of you. But if you don't connect them to the Lord, like Yeshua is sharing here, once you're gone, once you're not in the picture anymore, they're, they're not going to obey you. So what you shared, Yeshua, is, is so critical. And I'm so, how old are you, buddy? Uh, I'm 12 years old right now. Oh, I thought you were like 18. You're so mature in the way you think. <laughs> <think. laughs> it's amazing. Praise God. Yeah, that's great. Um, uh, can I jump to the Tan family? Um, what has been um, effective? What kind of training have your parents done that has been effective? And you can also share about the training that hasn't been effective because, you know, all of us parents, we make mistakes. So what has worked? What has not worked? 
and maybe t tell us more why why did it work? So, Tan family, that's that's key on. Take one, one to answer. Um, okay. I'm used to getting spam because before I get spam, they explain to me why they're spamming me, and after they explain to me why they spam me, and even though if they spam me, they they still love me no matter what. That's that's great, Kurt. Uh, Craig, sorry, yeah, yeah. There's so many, so many of the boys. Uh, so just forgive me if I if I mess up your names. But um, you, you, thank you for bringing up um, spanking. Um, and you know what, parents, there is the right way to spank and there's the wrong way to spank. So maybe from the other kids, um, I know um, my kids were spanked too, and I'm sure the other kids were spanked. Is there? What is the right way of spanking? When does spanking work, kids? When does it work for you guys? How does it how does it work and why does it work? Because if I ask the parents, you might say I'm biased. I want to ask the kids. Sophia, are you gonna say something? Um, I think it really works because when they spank us while they're angry or when they spank us because they're just really irritated, I feel like I get more angry and then and then it's like you don't really wanna listen to them when they spank you in anger, but when they spank you in love, it's like you really feel that they're doing this because they love you and they want to teach you. That's great. Um, again, how do you spank in love? What does that look like um, when your parents spank you in love? They talk to us gently and like when they spank us, they just give us like really one quick spank. And then they explain to us why they spanked us and then they don't yell at us or anything like that. Wow. You know, I wish every parent disciplined the way that uh, your parents do because that, that really, um, th does the spanking hurt? Yeah. Okay, so that's critical, okay guys? You know, um, I've known of um, parents that spank their children with a, uh, you know, um, if Andrew was here, Maybe he would tell the story, but he's not here right now. Maybe if he comes down later on, he'll tell the story. Ethan, can you call him? Because Andrew has a story to tell about spanking and the wrong way of spanking. But before he, he comes down, how about the others? Kirk, is there anything you wanted to add about, about um, the effective way that your parents have trained you? Now, I know that as you've gotten older, it hasn't been just about training you to be obedient. There are many things your parents have tried to train you, right? To be courageous, to be strong. Maybe you can talk about that. What, what have your parents done to train you in those areas? Um, uh, my parents tell me that everything is permissible. Kurt, can I see your face? I think you gotta lean in there. There we go, thanks. Uh, my parents tell me that everything is permissible, permissible, but not all of them is good for us. So um, they let us realize that there will be consequences, consequences based on our actions. That's great. So parents, there are many ways to train. I know Manny and Lisa are going to weigh in on this um, uh, in a bit about how to, how to train and, and what kind of discipline works. Um, but right now we have some questions about spanking, right? So um, Keon, before I go to my kids, is there anything else you wanted to add about what, what kind of training has worked? The training that worked for me is when they talk to me properly and calmly and when they're not mad at me and when they're not yelling and when they let us think about what we're doing wrong and let us think for ourselves. That's amazing, Kian. Um, all the parents out there, again, do not discipline in anger. When you're angry, don't spank your children. When you're angry, don't say things to your children that you're going to regret because um, it, it, it has a very great impact on them. Um, thank you for sharing that, Keon, and I agree with you. When, when us parents, when we're respectful to our children, but we're firm, right? You have to be firm. You have to be consistent because all of you shared, all of you shared that you have self-will. So it's normal to not want to obey. That's normal. What's not normal is learning how to obey, but in Christ, 
that's what we were made to do, to, to be obedient to him. And we learned that at home. Andrew, are you there, buddy? Do you want to share the story of um, when, I, when I spanked you and how that didn't work? <laughs> okay, can you tell us? Yeah. Um, um, so one time, my dad spanked me in a restaurant. And he explained to me that it was wrong to do that. And then he, and then he spanked me with a chopstick. <laughs> And it didn't hurt. So he said, it's not good to do that. Okay, I think I need to explain. So Andrew had disobeyed me, right? And I, I had told Andrew to come with me. Thank you, Andrew, for sharing that. It's an amazing story. Um, where are you, Andrew? There you go. Stay there. Right. And so Andrew had not obeyed me. I was telling him to do something at the restaurant, and he wasn't obedient. And I realized there are two ways to raise children, right? One is to just escalate and get angry and get angry until they actually obey you. Or the other way is just to be consistent. So I wasn't angry. I said, Andrew, you're coming with me to the bathroom. So I took Andrew to the bathroom. Because when you spank guys, you want to spank your children in a private place. You don't want to embarrass them. So we never spank in public. But you take your, 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 your child to a private place. And I had nothing to spank them with. Normally, I, I, I use a, a stick. Um, I don't want to use my hands because it might be a reflex when I'm irritated. I might hit my kids. So I want to use another tool. And, you know, the hands are for loving. Um, and so I had no spanking rod. So what I got was the chopsticks at the table. And I was in the bathroom. And I, 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 I wound up to spank him. But I couldn't generate enough speed and velocity so when I hit him, he started laughing, I started laughing, and I said, look, you know why I'm spanking you, it's because you're unobedient, you're not supposed to be, you know, you're supposed to be obedient, and you know what, uh, he got the message, right? But if every spanking was like that, none of my kids would learn obedience, because it would be a joke. So the spanking has to hurt. Um, my kids, uh, Caleb, Alana, Ethan, do you wanna share about what kind of training has been effective for you, and why was it effective? For, for us? Um, Manny, yeah, you want to go? Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, well, well yeah, the, the training really is uh, when they see us do things that we preach. Because once they see inconsistency, they're going to point it out. And they're going to say, hey, Daddy, that's, that's the thing that you, you know, you preach about this, but you, you don't do it. So I, I get and, and the thing with kids are, you know, you have to be honest with them. They're always watching. They're always watching. So all you have to do is ask, uh, you know, ask for forgiveness and do better. Uh, but, but you really have to admit your mistakes with kids because they know inconsistently. That, like, like what Jenny is saying, you know, we, we can be firm, but the moment we, we, we fail, we need, to, we need to confess and we really need to uh, ask, for ask for forgiveness. Thank you, Manny. I love that. It's your example. Guys, if you have questions, just shoot questions here. We're going we're gonna to spend the, the rest of the time, you know, um, answering questions as well. And the ones that are fed to me are the ones we'll answer. Um, as, as the questions are coming in, um, kids, my kids again, do you remember how old you were when you were, when you were spanked? Because there's a question, how old do we start disciplining our children? Um, Caleb, Alana, Ethan, can you remember? Uh, I don't remember the exact age, but usually our parents started spanking like Andrew when he was like, when he already understood what he was doing. So that's maybe like two years old or like one and a half. That's right. About, you know, even at one and a half, when you, when you know your child understands you already and he can communicate, um, it's, you, you, you start discipline early because children are like wild horses. You really have to be able to harness the, the passion without killing the passion, right? You don't, you don't quench the passion, but you have to harness them and you have to teach them to be obedient. Um, Alana and Ethan, did you want to add anything about um, uh, what training was effective and why was it effective? Uh, the training that was effective was that my parents would always spank me out of love and not out of anger. And that really meant a lot because... I um, knew that they would not spank me because they're just in an irritated way 
but they really did it because they loved me and they wanted me to learn from my mistakes. Thank you, Ethan. Alana, do you want to add anything? Um, well, besides spankings, my parents would take away privil privileges, like we couldn't go to a movie or we couldn't have some ice cream or things like that. <laughs> Alana, thank you for answering that because that's one of the questions. I want to throw it out there to either Jesse or um, Kat. But what other what other ways of disciplining are there? Um, you know, spanking is one. It's just one of the ways. But what are some other ways that have been effective in training your children? Could you guys share? Um, for us, like uh, um, you heard our uh, our older kids, right? So. When they grow, when when it when they are grown up already, we don't spank them. So what we do is um, withholding privileges. Like for example, um, they did something wrong or they didn't obey, so they will um will tell them to that they are not allowed to do this thing unless they will learn to obey. So that's what we do with them. So right now they are older, they are teenagers. What um what works with them is um. Just like what they said, uh, it works when we talk to them, we communicate to them, or just, you know, let them realize or not naman yung sobrang um, consequences, but we let them experience consequences with their wrong decisions. Yeah. So from that, they will learn and they will understand why they need to be. Yeah. Tsaka ano, tsaka we also, we are also trying to, to train them the value of grace. So, hindi naman palaging spanking. Yung spanking kasi last, what, last resort, <laughs> last resort na lang yun eh. Parang, yun na lang yung kung talagang hindi mo pwedeng gawin. For smaller kids, uh, for me, kasi diba sabi naman, ano eh, um, spare a rod, spoil a child. Pero, last, last na lang na option yun. Kasi sa children lang, mas madali nila yung maliliit, mas madali nilang maintindihan yung consequences to that. Kasi kailangan namin i-practice yung one command obedience eh. So, so ginagawa din namin, when, when, when we're about to discipline them, they, we talk to them. And then, pag nakikita din namin by the heart na talagang medyo, uh, they, they, they were sorry. And then we try to explain, alam mo anak, um, it is only by God's grace that we're here. So we wanted to extend that grace to you as well. Kasi nakita ako that you're sorry and you wanted to change and you're asking for forgiveness. Alam mo yun, misa kasi... Um, merong times that they will deny or sometimes they will try to to fight back or parang excuses. So, kailangan nilang ma-realize na yung heart talaga hindi okay. Pero, pagka naman there were times na talagang they will, they will say na, I'm really sorry I did something wrong, but will you forgive me? Sometimes they will even ask can you give me grace, daddy? So, ano eh, yung conviction mo din eh. You can really feel na are they trying to manipulate you? or they are really honest. So it's, it's your children. And 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 isa rin sa thing for us na nakatulong because we're homeschooling. So yung spending ng time. So the more time that we have, the more the more na nakikilala namin yung isa isa. The more that diba, sabi nga, rules without relationship leads to rebellion. Eh. So we cannot mm -hmm. just give rules without spending time with them or without, you know, in doing things with them. So part ng training namin, we go we go outdoors go climbing, hiking, or, or before mission. So, um, we want them to experience personally. Paano ba yung ginagawa sa iba? Ano ba yung conditions na iba? How blessed you are? And also, um, we, we try them to, we try also to teach them na, na it's okay to have plenty at the same time to have less. Diba? Yung matatulog ka sa hindi talaga comfortable na place. So, ganun yung isa din na training namin sa kanila. So, if we, if we talk, Pinatry namin to ipa-realize sa kanila, this is what will happen if you do this. We try to discipline you because we love you. Kasi if we will not discipline you now, diba, I just wanted to follow God, to obey the Lord. Kasi yun nga, motion before emotion. And if I will not discipline you one day, other people will discipline you. For example, the police. That's diba? The authorities over them. So, yun din yung gagawa niya. So, the, the moment we tell them that, nakikita mo nagka-calm down sila. Tapos before, nagkakaroon pa ng resistance. Ayaw dumapa, ayaw ilagasumpit yung, 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 yung ano nila. And then later on, talagang sila na mismo yung, yung magigigay na discipline. Last time nga, nung 
inisiplin ko yung dalawa kong maliit na anak. Tapos yung isang maliit, nagulat din ako eh. Before, talagang mag- may resistance eh. Pero nung last na inidisiplin ko siya, talagang accepted niya. Naging madali sinisiplin ko. Pag disiplin ko, hindi umiyak. Hindi umiyak. Tapos pagbaba dun sa mga kapatid niya, sabi ba naman, Daddy disciplined me. I did not cry, sabi niya. I have a butt of steel. <laughs> <laughs> May mga ganun yung sila. Metal, ano, metal bot. Metal yeah. bot, so, so, alam niya, so, meron din ganun mga ano sila. So, sabi ko, tama, malakas ba talaga yung pagkakadisiplina? Eh, just okay naman. Kaya lang may pagkakataon. It doesn't affect, yeah, it doesn't affect, affect him so much. Hindi yung, hindi yung pag-discipline, o yung pag-spunk talaga yung nag, nag-suck sa kanya. Mas na-discipline siya by talking to him, by explaining. Like to, si Kairon, i-discipline ko siya. Before ko siya na-discipline, last day, umabot ka nata kami almost one hour. Kasi he was trying to explain, he was trying to tell the stories. Last time, Daddy, you remember when you disciplined me? When I cry, you told me I'll, you'll discipline me again. And how can I stop? Of course, I will cry more. <laughs> so, sorry, yes, I'm trying to listen, trying to understand. And eventually, nung, nung I listen and I, I, I give him a chance to explain, yun, like, agree naman siya. And then, maganda yung conversation namin. And then, after this, after doing that, you will hug them. The kids, you will hug them. And then after hugging them, you'll explain to them, I, I did this because I love you. And then they will hug, hug back. So, alam mo yan, mas, mas yung discipline kasi, yun nga, not in anger, talk to them clearly, uh, tapos lovingly. Mas alam mo yan, mas mas masakit pa yung magsalita ka ng words na hindi maganda. You will shout at them. Diba? Mas masakit pa. Nag- Nagtinatamaan yung heart eh. Unlike yung ganung discipline. Flash, flash, diba? Sandaling pain and then it's gone. So, so ganun naman. Hindi naman palaging, hindi palaging spanking, spanking yung ginagawa niya. Thank you, Jesse. I, I love everything that you shared. Um, you know, one, one command obedience. Parents, that means once you say something, you don't have to repeat yourself. You just say it once. And if they don't obey, then you, you, you do some form of discipline. And Jesse is saying there are many forms of discipline. Spanking is just one of them. The nice thing about spanking is it's quick, you get it over with, and when you do it in love, it, it is, um, what's the word? It doesn't damage a child. When you shout at a child, Jesse said, and when you say things to them, it, it, it hurts deep inside. It's, you know, the Bible says that God disciplines those whom he loves. And it's short-term pain for long-term gain. Um, Manny, did you want to, Manny and Lisa, did you want to add, um, there's some questions here about spanking and, you know, other forms. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I think the, the, the best form of discipline is actually not, not, not spanking. Honestly, when the Bible says, fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up. The goal is to bring them up. And that is to make sure that they reach their highest and full potential in the Lord. So I picture it as having, you know, my hands are given to me. I have 10 fingers signifying that my kid's potential in the Lord is 10 out of 10. And it is the parent's job. We were given these hands so that we can bring them up in, 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 in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. So now I can use this answer. There are so many ways for us to bring them up. And one of those is spanking, but very like, like what Jesse said, it's, it's the last resort. I believe that the best form of discipline is actually reinforcing good behavior. So once you see a good behavior with your kids, especially with the oldest, you reinforce it. You allow the other kids to see that you're reinforcing their good behavior and you are giving them rewards and you have giving them blessing. So now they realize like, you know what, I'm going to do that again because it feels good. It makes my daddy happy. It makes mommy happy. It makes them proud. So they will do it again. Instead of focusing only on their mistake. On what they do wrong. On, on what they do wrong. Because I believe many parents feel like their job as parents is to watch each and every area of their kid's life and watch out for the mistakes. And once they catch the mistake, boom, spanking kagat. And the kids, the problem with this is, these kids will have a wrong view of not only their parents and parenting. When they become parents, they will be like that. They will also have a wrong view of God because they would think that God is the same way. That God is the God who just, you know, watch out for every mistake that we do. And then boom, we get disciplined. So I believe that at the end of the day, our kids need to know that 
their parents love them and we do everything that we do out of love and out of something that is good for them. And along with that, I think it's important to, to be clear as parents because if we look at how God the Father is, you know, he was very clear with his instructions. You know, he gave the Ten Commandments. He's very clear um, before he disciplines because sometimes it's easy as a parent to get frustrated at our children. Um, for example, like if we're out and our kids are like running around, you know, sometimes we as parents, we, we get really frustrated. Like, why are you, you know, you're running. But as parents, we have to realize maybe we weren't clear in the first place. So we need to be clear because God is clear with us. We should be clear. So example, say, you know, um, this is the situation we're entering. This is, you know, what is a respectable way to behave you know, before it happens. Um, so we're not just getting mad at them when they sometimes kids don't know why. Why are my parents mad at me? Sometimes they're confused. Um, so be clear for one. And then like Manny said, you know, the Bible says, you know, to really train up our kids. Um, I think we really need to focus on the heart, not just the outward behavior. Because as when they're young, sometimes it's easy to just focus on the outward behavior, but that might backfire as they get older if their heart is not inclined to God. So really, our, our goal is to really teach them about God and teach them how much God loves them and show, you know, model to them how to love God and how to obey God for ourselves and really um, introduce them to the Savior so that their heart can be inclined to God so that that's when they'll really want to obey. You know, I remember when um, Yeshua, when he was a toddler, he was... Um, you know, he was very active and, um, you know, he would run around a lot and stuff. And I would really try to discipline him. But I realized, you know, it just, it wasn't going anywhere. Like I felt like um, he wasn't responding to the discipline. It wasn't helping at all. You know, even I was really, really trying to discipline, 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 everything I would discipline, but I felt like it wasn't helping. But then one day, you know, we, we sat down and we shared the gospel um, to him about the good news of Jesus, how he loves us, how he died on the cross for our sins. Um, and, you know, we need to repent of our sins and come to Jesus to save us. Um, even though he was young, he accepted. And I remember a few months later, I remember looking at him and I was thinking to myself, I was thinking, you know, I feel like I have a different son. Like all of a sudden, you know, before he doesn't listen, but now it's like his heart is soft. And I really, I traced it back to that time when he had really accepted Jesus into his heart. And I could really see from the inside out the change of behavior, even though he was really young, because it was really God speaking to him and really, you know, God being it's in his Holy heart, Spirit. the Holy Spirit in his heart, teaching him to obey. So I could really see his heart was softer. So now um, it was much easier to discipline because his heart was now in the right place. So I think that that's the most important thing we can do as parents is to really teach our kids about God and connect them to the heart of God. Because um, at the end of the day, even if we're not around, our goal is for them to really obey God. You know, our goal is not to have our kids be independent, but to learn to be God dependent. Because God will be there for them always, even when we're not always around or with them or telling them what to do. God will be there for them. So we need to teach them to lean on God and obey God, uh, most of all. Also, another tip is uh, delegation. You know, if you have older kids, if you have uh, four families here, you have older kids, you can delegate. You can, you can ask the kuya or the ate to take the responsibility uh, while you are away or you're doing something. They, they can be responsible. So you're teaching them how to be responsible and you're teaching the other kids to obey not only your authority, but the authority also of their kuya and ate. It's a really big help. Guys, so much wisdom there. Thank you for sharing that. Um, you know, our time is coming to a close. I wish we could go on and on. So I'm going to ask the, um, the kids first. Any um, parting words? And it, you can be speaking to children. You can be speaking to parents. So anything you want to say as you guys um, wrap up your time here. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, we'll, we'll start with the uh, a Tan family. And... You know, anybody have any closing remarks from the, from the children? Anything that you wanted to say about this topic of training? Sophia, you wanted to say something? Um, I guess I just want to encourage everyone to keep trusting God and obeying even though it seems hard because it really helps after and in the end obedience brings blessing amen thank you so much um how about from you jesse and kat 
Are there any anything you want to uh, share for the children or for for the other parents or Craig? Is there anything you want to say or Keon? You know. Yeah, Craig wants to share also. Okay, um, I love it, Craig. I think um, everyone should obey their parents no matter what, even though if they get mad, they still love you. No, because. Yeah, you should obey no matter what. Thanks, Craig. Um, that's true for even for us uh, parents and adults. We need to learn to obey God the same way you're telling us to telling children to obey their parents. Thank you, uh, Jesse and Cat. I just um, um I came across this um, verse this morning during my my um, devotion, so I just want to share it now. Um, I think um, God prepared this for tonight. Um, mm -hmm. It says here in Hebrews 10, verse 35 to 36. Um, Therefore, do not throw away your confidence, which has a great reward, for you have need of endurance, so that when you have done the will of God, you may receive what was promised. So I just want to encourage everyone, every parent, that you know, we, we should not lose heart and just be faithful. Just be a faithful mother and a faithful father. Whatever season um, we may be right now, um, even if, you know, there are a lot of families who doesn't have um, helpers and it's hard for them. So parang yun yung mga questions na dumadating sa akin minsan when, when other homeschoolers, how, how you do this because you don't have helpers, not unlike other families that they have helpers. So, you know, you just have to be faithful with what you think is God wants you to do with your children. And as parents, we should always remember that each moment, each stage in the life of our children, it will pass away quickly and it will never come back again. So for me, um, I just want to embrace that moment right now and give the best that I can. Because sometimes I got disappointed if I think na hindi ko nabigay yung best ko. As long as you know that you give your best, God will do the rest. That's enough. As long as you obey God and you think that, you know, in your heart, you have a pure heart that you did what you need to do. It's, it's okay. So don't be disappointed and just um, be faithful. Thank yeah. you, Chad. Thanks, Chad. Yeah, for me, you know, um, be, uh, I think for all the parents, be the best model for your children, for your family. Um, because our children copy us, or they watch more than they they listen. So, kahit anong gawin, ako, I, I was always being reminded of them, humbled na, may mga gusto kong, yung expectation ko for them, or may mga gusto kong like, like, hindi ko to na experience, I want you to do this, like that, like that. For example, praying, I saw them praying and then I, sometimes I get disappointed and then I was reminded that, imagine, it, it, just ilang taong ka na natuto mag-pray, 35, 36, when I receive the Lord, I, I can even pray when, in the start. Right now, yung mga anak ko, pag may pray, parang, what can I mag-pray? So it was not, uh, uh, the Lord showed me not to be disappointed and uh, just be a, a good model kasi, End of the day, nung narinig ko yung verse at sa homeschooling, yung uh, Isaiah 54, 13, yung all your sons will be thought of the Lord and the well-being of your sons will be great. So, end of the day, it is God who will bless them. It is God who will give them the wisdom, peace, and everything. Um, we, we should not be a stumbling block for them. Hindi dapat nila makita ang Panginoon is our Father uh, na, na yun yung ginagawa natin image for them. So, Kung, kung minsan nga nag-uusap kami, um, like, like yung mga anak ng mga farmers, uh, yung pa yung nagiging president o yung pa yung nagiging successful na tao kasi nakita nila yung ginagawa ng parents nila. Being humble and everything, not puro dapat to gawin mo, dapat ganyan ang gawin mo. So just, just, just focus. Focus on obey first. And then as you obey the Lord, as you follow the Lord, as your children see that, but they will also follow the Lord. And then everything uh, will fall into the right place. Thank you so much, Jesse, Kat, and the entire Tan family. Thank you for joining us. Um, we've learned so much from you today. Um, 
How about from you, Yeshua? What What are some of your, oh. um, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I just want to share to everyone, especially um, the kids that might be listening in, that if you want to obey, if you want to obey your parents, which is the right thing to do, you have to know um, who you're really obeying, and that's God. And he, he, he can change you so that you can really obey him because obeying him is what's best for you. So, so in order to obey him, you got to know him. So you got to know, you, you got to know him because he is your savior. He is the one that, that's give, given you life. So you got to, you got to believe in him. You got to put your trust in him. He died on the cross to save us from our sins and he came back to life. And he loves us and he disciplines us only to help us. Thank you, Yeshua. And that's why all of us have help because uh, that's why all of us have hope because of Christ. You know, if it wasn't, if it wasn't for Christ, none of us, none of us would be here, honestly. Um, so it's God's grace. Thank you for that reminder, buddy. Um, Thanks, Manny and Lisa, is there anything, I mean, you want to just uh, end with? You guys shared so um, much wisdom already. I just want to share a verse I love, Galatians 6, verse 9. It says, you know, do not grow weary in doing good, for at the proper time you will reap a harvest if you do not give up. So, you know, God, God is always reminding me that, you know, as we're raising children, you know, we just we keep um, planting the seed of the word. You know, we keep teaching them, keep training them, keep teaching them about God, reading them the Bible, and don't grow weary. You know, sometimes the results, you know, are not... Um, uh, instant. It's really, it's really a long-term process of you keep teaching them about God, planting the word, um, and just loving God for ourselves. And God is always reminding me, you know, do not grow weary. God will be the one to take care of the results in the proper time. And God does promise that there will be a harvest if we do not grow up and if we do not become weary, but we just continue to keep our eyes on Jesus and do what he's called us to do. Amen. I couldn't agree more with that verse and that, um, that parting remark. Thank you, Lisa. Manny? Yeah, just uh, maybe maybe later we can pray. I just felt like uh, many of us here are really burdened, you know, really burdened with the uncertainty of this COVID and really burdened with, you know, being in a house, especially if you have a small house or a condo or you're renting a place where you don't have options but to rub each other and rub each other's elbows. And it, I feel like there's burden that, that the enemy has given us. And I, I just want to encourage each parent that your, your family may be your burden, but they are not like a heavy burden for you. You know, they're, they're, they're the they Lord, are God's gift to us they are God's gift to us. And, and I pray that indeed many families here will really draw closer to God. Uh, as we draw closer to God, we are drawn closer to each other. So, if, if I can just pray, just just a short prayer, if you will allow sure. me, Paul. Yeah, Manny, I will let you close us in prayer, okay? So that we can, right. we can wrap up with that. So we're, I'm excited for you to pray for all of us. Um, Caleb, Alana, Andrew, uh, I mean, Ethan and Andrew. So I was going to say that training your kids to obey takes a long time. So you should be patient with them. It like it really takes a long time, like many years. Thank and, you, Caleb. And, and I just want to encourage all the parents to always train out of love and not anger. And um, the kids that are listening out there, that you should remember that you don't obey your parents because you're scared of getting disciplined, but you should obey them because you know that um, God wants what's best for you and He loves you. That's why He does. Thank you, guys. Thank you for sharing that. Um, sweetheart? Thank you all for sharing. I'm so blessed. Um, one of the things I guess I want to encourage everybody also with is that, you know, enjoy this stage. Mm -hmm. Enjoy where your kids are at. And even if you don't feel that they're being very obedient, I think, you know, take heart. I think the beauty is we have God's word. Mm -hmm. You know, we have his spirit in us if you have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And so I think, you know, go before the Lord, get on your knees. Many times I get on my knees when I don't know what to do. I'm seeing many questions, you know, people asking, you know, how should I discipline? When do I spank? Do I have to spank? What about my kids being with in-laws that don't know the Lord? And I think, you know, we just have so many questions. Mm -hmm. And I think the beauty is when you have a relationship with Jesus Christ, he is the one that will guide you. 
And remember, each child is unique and each child is special. And I think even how you discipline is gonna be special to that child. And so I think as you get to know your children, also keep that in mind. And I think the more you enjoy them, the more you have fun with them, Manny and Lisa said this, you know, develop that relationship with them, get to know them. Because I think the more you get to know them, the more you love on them, actually it's gonna become easier to really parent them. And one of the things that has really helped Paul and I is to be aligned. Mm. So, you know, something we talk about, you know, how are we gonna discipline? What are our rules? And making that very clear to our kids. And basically we have two rules and it's obedience and respect. And something I realized as a, as a mother, you know, I have to model that. And I know um, Manny was saying this too, but if I don't model to my kids, Jesse was saying it as well, if I don't show my kids that I respect their father, then they're going to be disrespectful to me. They're going to be disrespectful to him, to their siblings. So it really starts with us. It starts with us modeling to our kids. You know, even how we talk about others, how we respect others, our governing authorities, all these people, you know, our kids are watching us. And if we're telling them to respect and obey us, but yet we're not also respecting and obeying our authorities, how are they going to follow us in that? So I just want to encourage you all in that. Both Paul and I are, you know, a work in progress. We have so far to go in our parenting. But I know it's only by God's grace and it's only being on our knees before him, asking for his wisdom and his strength to really direct us on how to really parent and train our kids. Thank you, sweetheart. You really are the love of my life um, next to Christ. Um, and uh, friends, thank you so much for joining us. Um, we, we've learned a lot from, from our panelists. Thank you, Manantala family. Thank you, Tan family. And uh, thank you, uh, Tanchi kids, for sharing from your heart. And thank you, Jenny. So before we close in prayer, just some reminders. Uh, next week, uh, we're going to meet here again, same time, 7.30. There's going to be one uh, Zoom webinar for for all ages, it's teach and train part two. So I know some questions were not answered and um, I'm sorry we couldn't answer all of them, but hopefully we can answer more of them uh, next week. So you see next week, it's got a full house. We got the Perkin family. We got some of the Tanchi family again um, and uh, Pastor Net and uh, Tita Bang will be joining us well. So thank you again. And my closing remarks is this, uh, two words. God's grace. It's really God's grace when it comes to raising your children. And if you haven't experienced God's grace, this is the night for you to give your life to Christ. Yeshua, the young man, shared with us how important it is for us to be connected to Christ. Jesse, if he had more time, he would tell you how his life was radically changed when he met Christ. He was headed in another direction. And my life was radically changed when I encountered Christ as well. And so will your life. It's God's grace, guys, and be consistent. Don't get angry when you, when you are disciplining your children. Allow the Holy Spirit to control you. And that's why we need to close in prayer because we need God's spirit in us to be able to do that. So Manny, can you pray for all of us? Um, pray for those who want to give their life to Christ. Pray for all the burdens that um, uh, we carry. Um, God says that uh, cast all your cares upon him because he cares for us. So let's close in prayer. Father God, thank you that... Uh... Lord Jesus, you are the model, mm. and you have perfected everything that we are to do in this world. You have already perfected it, and through faith, we will be able to overcome. So, Lord Jesus, thank you for being that model, being that perfect model, and thank you for sending the Holy Spirit. And, Lord Jesus, you also know that, you know, we are carrying so much burdens, and thank you for welcoming us and allowing us to come to you whenever we are carrying burdens whenever we are heavily burdened. Lord Jesus, thank you that we can go to you anytime. Father, we know that parenting is not easy. Being a mom, being a dad, uh, being a provider, and doing all these things, disciplining our kids, training them, uh, educating them. Lord Jesus, these are, these are things that really are burdensome. But Father, thank you that you have provided for everything that we need. And Lord, thank you that you are our Father. And we can go to you anytime through the Son. And Father, we also understand that maybe there are people here who doesn't have a relationship with you yet. Lord, we know that this time is not an accident. 
that the reason why they are watching right now is because you are calling them into your fold. You are calling them home. And so, mm -hmm. Lord Jesus, if there's anybody here who doesn't have a relationship with you yet, Father, I pray that you would open their eyes and their heart, Lord, so that they will surrender their life to you. They will admit that they cannot do it on their own, that they cannot achieve anything on their own. Without you, we are nothing, Father. And so, Lord Jesus, I pray that if there's anybody here who doesn't have a relationship with you yet, I pray for that person. If you are that person right now, I just, you know, pray this simple prayer. Lord Jesus, I admit that I'm a sinner. I do not deserve to go to heaven. But Father, you have sent your only son while we were still sinners. You allowed your son to die for our sins and to pay for the penalty of our sins. Lord, I believe in what you did on the cross. I believe that you rose again from the grave to prove that you can give me life. Lord Jesus, I want to surrender my life to you right now. I want that life you're giving. I don't want my own life. I cannot drive my own life. I cannot bring my family closer to you, but I know you can do it for me. And so, Lord Jesus, I'm putting my trust to you. Forgive me for all my sins. I'm walking away from my sins, and I'm turning to you, Lord Jesus. Come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. And Father, I pray that you will not only bless me, but bless my family and the future generation, Lord, that you will allow me to have so that we may bring glory and honor to you. Father, I pray for each family represented here that you will indeed bless them with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realm. If there's unforgiveness between them, Lord Jesus, I pray that your Holy Spirit will convict them and really allow them to say sorry to each other and ask for forgiveness. If there's any bitterness, we lift it, that up to you, Lord Jesus, because you have paid for everything. Everything has been settled by your blood on the cross. So, Lord Jesus, guide us, bless us, lead us, and we want to honor you with our life and with our family. Mm -hmm. Bless the Tanchi family. Bless this church, CCF. Bless every family represented here so that we can uh, bring honor and glory to you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you so much, Pastor Manny. Thank you, everyone. Um, please fill up the feedback forms. Um, I'm sure it's somewhere in your screen. You can, you can click it. Um, and if you have discussion questions with your group, it's going to be flash. So thank you so much for joining. Um, God bless everybody. We enjoyed our time with you all. Thank you so much. God bless you, Paul and Jenny. Great job, everyone. God bless my family. God bless you guys. Yep, so Pete, Keon, Kirk, so proud of you, Yeah, Anna. great job, Keon, Sophia, Kirk. Yeah. Cat, Jesse, great job. Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye.